What's going on, YouTube fam? This is the Wealth Investing Network. We do this for the win. You're getting a sneak peek into my stock portfolio and a sneak peek into my research on stocks. Today, we're doing a little bit more of a stream of consciousness. We're talking about EVgo and we're talking about Beam Global, two companies that are in the electric vehicle charging space that I find interesting. And because I put a lot of time and effort into my videos, I gotta ask you to please hit that like button, turn it blue, drop a comment, subscribe if you are new because these things help our channel grow, which helps me create better videos for you that's a win-win. Now, again, we're doing more stream of consciousness today because I saw that EVgo uses these solar canopies. And when you see this, you might think that, oh, they're actually using solar to charge vehicles. Well, that's not exactly true. I came across this article because people don't know how much power solar canopies actually generate. They don't realize that it's insignificant to the power demands of a fast charging station. You see, EVgo is all about DC fast charging. They want your experience filling up an EV battery to be a little more similar to a gas station in that you can get in and out relatively quick. Relative being the key word. For a car like this, it might take 20 minutes to fill up completely versus a gas station might take two minutes, but you think, uh, you stop, you have something to drink or something to eat, and you get on your way. For EV standards, that's fast charging. A more common standard is charging overnight. Most EV drivers charge their car overnight, and they don't charge their cars in public. Most EV drivers have some sort of garage or place that they can charge where they've bought a charger, they plug it into their outlet, those expenses go towards their electric bill, and it's actually a lot less expensive than using a public charger. So again, there's a lot that people don't understand about, I guess, the EV mindset. I'm gonna go ahead and read this verbatim. According to a study by fast charging company EVgo, under standard use, a bank of four chargers, only four, requires as much power as that needed to power 100 homes. And if you're using the even faster charging speed, which is 350 kilowatts, with those same four chargers, that bank, it will require as much power as 230 homes. And when we're talking about that kind of power, this solar canopy is insignificant. For a solar canopy to work for fast charging needs, you would essentially need 1,094 solar panels under ideal conditions covering about 20,000 square feet. That's just for one charger. A spokesperson for EVgo basically admitted that, and that's why most EVgo stations don't have solar canopies. And so even though there's a lot of people that are gonna have to admit that the solar power alone will not provide the necessary energy to power these very powerful chargers, technically it's a net positive because it does something. But you gotta remember the EV mindset that people are gonna have is so much different. A regular car battery is like the size of a small Amazon package, right? And it fits in the engine. But for an EV, the battery is huge. It typically takes up the whole bottom of the vehicle. It costs upwards of $10,000 itself versus the typical car battery that you're used to seeing. You could pick that up at any big box retailer, right? And so you can't think of powering up an EV like you think about the gas station. Honestly, you can't even think about it the way you would charge your phone. Although there may be some more similarities in that we mostly charge our phones at night. We mostly don't charge our phones in public unless we absolutely have to. But the reason why we can't think of EV batteries like our phones is because of how long they last. If your phone battery goes out, you can get a new one. It's not that big of a problem. Typical cell phone batteries have an expected lifespan of three to five years, depending on conditions and whatnot. And even if you overcharge it, that can reduce the lifespan, but it doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things. However, I don't even think we know how long EV batteries are gonna last. There's estimates that put it close to about 200,000 miles, but then again, that depends on your use. All these people buying Chevy Volts and Teslas right now, we'll see in five years and 10 years if people's batteries start going out and what that's gonna mean. Are people gonna say, hey, I shouldn't have overcharged my car using a very powerful charger all the time? Maybe I should have been more patient and used trickle charging because that would have made my battery last longer. Level two charging can take anywhere from about six hours to charge and really slow charging could take even longer than overnight. And it depends on what kind of car you have. If you have a Ford F-150 Lightning and you're using trickle charging, you're gonna have to do a lot more planning about when you drive your car. But surveys show that it, when it comes to EV adoption, most people who have adopted EVs will park their car in a garage or a driveway next to their house. One study showed about 88% of people with EVs. So if you're not driving at night, that leaves plenty of time for you to charge and kind of avoid this range anxiety and have the level of battery power to get where you need to go. Now look, if you know me, if you know the channel, you know that I, there are some things that I like about EVgo and Beam Global. 
I've gotten into some of those things in other videos. If you're interested, you could pause this, go check those out and come right back. Switching to another article, there's a lot of noise about this goal of half a million public electric vehicle chargers. To hear the U.S. president talk about it, you would think that we need at least five or ten times as many public chargers as we currently do. We currently have over 100,000 public EV chargers, but a lot of people don't talk about how many at-home chargers there are. Now, if we're moving to 50% EV sales by 2030, maybe there's going to be more drivers who need to do long distances and they're going to need public chargers. And maybe public charging stations will be more crucial to those who live in apartments, perhaps whose landlords aren't going to install chargers at their building. That's all fine and good. But I think another key thing is that chargers need to work. A lot of chargers just straight up don't work. According to a study in the Bay Area, 97% of the fast chargers are owned by three companies, ChargePoint, Electrify America, and EVgo. ChargePoint had a relatively large reliability issue with over 35% of their chargers not working. About a quarter of EVgo's chargers didn't work and close to 20% of Electrify America's chargers didn't work. This could be devastating if you're treating your car like a lot of people treat their phones and they let their battery go all the way down to 5% or 1% before trying to charge. If you do that with your car, which you should not, you should change your mindset if you have an EV, but if you do that and you come up to a charger that doesn't work, well, then you're really in a bad place. And that's just based on my understanding. Please do your own research because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just showing you what I found and just kind of doing a stream of consciousness in this video, doing it more casual than I normally do. But since we're talking about range anxiety, that kind of reminds me of my conversation with the CEO of Beam Global. He essentially talked about getting enough juice to replace your last drive. So let's say there was an EV arc at your workplace, right? That's Beam Global's product. You could drive to work, charge your car while you're at work, and more than replace what you drove that day. Again, if you're unfamiliar with an EV arc, I'll give a quick explanation. It's different than the kind of solar canopies we were talking about. This is actually a portable product. Even for a solar canopy or any of the typical EV charging stations that you might see, construction is involved. And when construction is involved, you need permits, you need electricians. If you have a parking lot, you actually might need to reduce the number of spaces. You don't need any of that with an EV arc because they can come and they can drop this thing off in an existing parking spot. No construction, no permits. There is battery storage in here, so it can essentially charge day or night. It can even charge during a grid failure. You could also use the charger of your choice. Beam Global actually might partner with EVgo in some instances. They definitely partner with ChargePoint and some of the others. So I think there's a lot of advantages here with this company. They recently acquired AllCell, which is a battery company. I can only find out a limited amount about them doing internet research, but I do think this is going to be a benefit for their technologies because it's a company they already work with. So bringing them into the fold brings in some natural efficiency. A lot of positive things came from their last earnings report, but here's the biggest flaw for me. Even though they are growing their revenue at a very rapid pace, essentially doubling year over year, they're still at a gross loss. And then on top of that, they're doubling their operating expenses at the same time. And when you switch to the balance sheet, they are very much draining their cash position. You don't want to see them running low on cash because then that means they're going to have to take on debt or dilute shareholders. And share dilution is a very easy way for small companies to get cash from investors and continue their operations. When you look at EVgo, you're going to see a similar thing. You're going to see very high growth, higher and higher losses, and also their cash balance going down. They had almost half a billion dollars in cash, and this is quickly dwindling. Now, usually we get really into the weeds with the stocks. We talk about the valuation of these companies, because whether or not I think it's a generally good company or generally not so good of a company, the price is key. The valuation is key. Have you ever been to a farmer's market where one time they're charging $10 for strawberries, and then you come back another time and they're charging $2 for strawberries? Very specific example, I know, but that's what I'm talking about when it comes to valuation. You could have bought EVgo stock a year ago for $20 if you wanted to, or you could have waited and maybe you get a better value that way, but it still might not be the best value. And valuation is very tricky, especially when it comes to kind of smaller companies. But when you Google it, you might see a market cap of over $2 billion, over $2.5 billion for EVgo. But when you look into some of the metrics, you might see a market cap closer to $600 million. This is not the video where I'm really going to dive deep into this discrepancy. All I know is that the market cap is essentially a formula, and that formula consists of the stock price and the shares outstanding. I'm not sure how many shares outstanding there are for EVgo. 
It's unclear. This is a company that came to the public markets via a SPAC. You might see an implied shares outstanding of close to 200 million or shares outstanding of about 69 million. Whichever one is true is going to make a big difference about what the market cap is. And that'll change their valuation because the price to sales ratio is one of the better valuation metrics to look at growing companies with. It might matter a little bit less for companies that are mature because you could look at things like the P.E. ratio. But because EVgo is an unprofitable company, same with Beam Global, you're not going to have a P.E. ratio. And you might want to compare it to tech companies or the S&P 500. And generally, you want price to sales to be as low as possible. The average for the S&P over time is about two. Tech companies can get a little higher. But when you're going into the double digits, you've got to have really good reasons to pay premiums for these kinds of stocks. You consider a market cap of anywhere between half a billion dollars to two and a half billion dollars. You're paying a multiple of over 20. That seems ridiculous. Beam Global a little better, but here's what I'm worried about is cash. Share dilution means they're gonna cut your piece of the pie into more and more pieces and give it to other people, essentially. In general, I like the prospects a little better for Beam Global, but because a lot of us are looking at the wrong things, policy decisions might favor EV Go a little bit more, and so we'll see. I'm gonna keep coming back to this in a few months, Please comment below and let me know what you think about these. Please hit that like button, turn it blue, subscribe if you are new. I have to go hydrate. Thank you so, so much for watching. See you in the next video.